Hi guys, I know this is a little bit blurry, but I wanted to go over this worksheet with you and this is kind of the best screenshot I could get of it. So we've done some of these already. Let me just take you through how to do this one more time. So in the first problem, we're gonna bond lithium and sulfur. So we need to draw their dot diagrams as atoms. Lithium has one valence electron, so he has one dot, and sulfur has six valence electrons. Sometimes when people look at it on the periodic table there, that table's got such small numbers, it looks like it has eight but in fact it has six. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how many of each of these atoms do I need in order to complete both of their shells. Lithium is the metal, so he's gonna give away that valence electron, and underneath he'll have a full shell of two. He's a small atom, so his undershell only holds two. Sulfur, however, will not be full if he gets just one electron. He needs two more. So that must mean that I need two lithium atoms, each of which will donate an electron to sulfur. So I show that by writing a coefficient of two. Please don't write it as a subscript, a little number down at the bottom of the lithium. Don't do that because that would mean that the two lithium atoms are bonded to each other. The big two means I've got two separate lithium atoms and each one is gonna give sulfur an electron. Looks like this. Each lithium has one valence electron. Sulfur needs six, I'm sorry, sulfur needs two. So I'll make the lithiums into X's so that they're easy to see. So each lithium is gonna give an electron to sulfur. And then underneath, the undershell of lithium has two valence electrons in it. And that's why lithium will be full with two after we do that, because lithium's a small atom. Sulfur will now have eight. So after the bonding process takes place, I'm gonna have two lithium ions. They will each have two valence electrons. And they'll each have a charge of one positive because electrons are negative. If you give up a bad habit, a negative thing, you become more positive. Because these electrons left, we now have more protons in the lithium atom than electrons. Likewise, the sulfur is going to gain each of those electrons from the two lithium. It'll fill up, it'll have eight. It'll have a charge on it of two minus because he gained two negative things. He picked up two bad habits. So sulfur has a charge of two minus. For magnesium and chlorine, magnesium has two valence electrons. There you go. Chlorine has seven. Again, I have to figure out how many magnesiums and chlorines I need. Looks like magnesium has two to give away, but chlorine can only accept one. So I'll need a second chlorine atom to get the second magnesium electron. It'll look like this over on the right hand side. You'll take the magnesium and you'll need not one, but two chlorines, one there and one here. And then the magnesium, again, I'll make them X's so you can see where they go. The magnesium will give one to this chlorine and one to that chlorine, and that'll fill up each chlorine. And underneath, the shell underneath for magnesium is full with eight. So here's what happens. We wind up with a full magnesium shell with eight. He has a charge of two plus because he gave away two bad habits or two electrons. Then we have two chlorine atoms, each of which gained an electron so each chlorine gained a bad habit, so each chlorine is a little more negative by one. Aluminum and oxygen, you have to play around for a long time uh, to figure out how many of each atom you need. You're actually gonna wind up needing two aluminums and three oxygens to make this work. I'll show you how that goes. So the long way around, it goes like this. I need to start with an aluminum atom which has three valence electrons, and an oxygen atom, which has six. It's another one that looks like it might say eight, but it actually says six. The aluminum on top can give two electrons to oxygen, but then he's gonna have one left over, right? So I can get this one to go here, whoa, and this other electron right next door can go uh, here, and that fills up the oxygen, but you see how there's a leftover aluminum? electron, I'll need another oxygen for that. So he'll go to this guy, but that leaves my oxygen missing one, so I'll need another aluminum. And I'll take 
this electron and give it to that oxygen. Great. Now my two oxygens are filled up, but I have two extra electrons on this aluminum. They need a place to go, so they'll need another oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Oh, he needs two. Perfect. These two can go here and here. Now that's an ugly mess, right? So if that's bothering you, doing all that drawing of where the electrons are actually going and moving them around and stuff, there is a mathematical way of doing this, and I'll show it to you. What we want to do is we want to take the atoms involved and write them with the charges that they have. You can find the charge that an atom has by looking at the oxidation numbers that I had you fill in across the top of the periodic table. Because aluminum is in group 13, I had you write a 3 plus above that group, and that means that everybody in that group has a charge of 3 plus when they bond. Oxygen's in group 16, he has a charge of 2 minus when he bonds. Everybody in that group does. Now, what you want to do is figure out how many of each atom you need, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take those charges and turn them into the number of atoms you need of the opposite atom. It's called crossing over, and at first it may seem a little bit confusing, but it's really easy. Basically all I'm doing is I'm saying that, well, the oxygen's got a 2. Don't worry about the, the negative sign. It has 2, so that must mean the aluminum, there's 2 of them. And the aluminum has a 3, so that must mean that there's 3 oxygens. You see the crossover? So all you do is reverse the charges. The charge of the one atom becomes the number you need of the other. So I had a 3 plus charge of aluminum, that means I have 3 oxygen atoms. I had a 2 minus charge for oxygen, that means I have 2 aluminum atoms. The formula for this compound is Al2O3. And when you go to write it in here, in the boxes, you'll do it just like you did before. Aluminum has three valence electrons. Oxygen has six. I'll need two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. When they form ions, the aluminum is going to give away three valence electrons, and then underneath he'll have eight. His charge will be plus three or three plus. You can write it either way. The oxygen atoms, I'll have three turn into ions. They will fill up. Each one will get two electrons. So they'll each have a two minus charge. Lithium and hydrogen are a little bit odd because the lithium atom and the hydrogen atom, both are small atoms. They have full shells when they have, um, I'm sorry, sorry, they only have one shell right? If you look on the periodic table, they both are in group or period one. They're in row one, which means that they only have one electron shell, and it's the little one that only holds two electrons. So lithium has one valence electron. I'm sorry, lithium is actually in, in uh, period two, so he has two shells. But the outer shell that he has has one valence electron, but the shell underneath can only hold two. Keep that in mind. So lithium has one valence electron, and so does hydrogen. And at first, a lot of students get confused and they're like, well, wait, uh, lithium's got it. I need eight lithiums to fill up hydrogen? Uh-uh. Because -uh. hydrogen only needs one more electron to be full. He's a small atom. He's full with two. So lithium can give that one electron to hydrogen and be done. So when lithium does that, what does he look like? Well, he's going to have the shell underneath, which is small. He's a small atom now because he gave away his outer shell. His outer shell was bigger, but his inner shell can only hold two, so it's full. And he gave away an electron, so he has a one plus charge. Hydrogen gained that electron, and even though he's in group one with lithium, and you might think, oh, he must have a one plus charge also, he doesn't. He actually has a one minus charge. He's the exception in that column. He has two valence electrons now, because he got one from lithium. The reason he has a negative charge is he gained an electron, and electrons are negative. Hydrogen cannot give away his only valence electron. Because if he does, he'll just be a single proton in the nucleus, which is very unstable. That can't happen um, for very long. When it does happen, you get an acid. That's why acids are so dangerous, because hydrogen ions are extremely, extremely unstable. So as soon as they touch any surface, they try to grab electrons from it and fill up that valence shell, and that's how you get chemical reactions every time an acid touches something. So hydrogen is an exception. In group one, hydrogen always has a one negative charge. And again, these atoms are small, so they only have two electrons. Those are the, really the only atoms you have to worry about, lithium and hydrogen, 
um, every once in a while you might there might be another one but but if you just focus on lithium and hydrogen being small atoms they're the only ones that fill up with two calcium and oxygen calcium has two valence electrons oxygen has six need a thicker pen here let's try that there we go that's a little better you can see them better okay so I have six valence electrons and um, I need for oxygen to complete itself I need two how convenient because calcium has two so I only need one calcium and one oxygen if you did the crossing over trick that I taught you over here uh, you would think you needed two calciums and two oxygens because calcium has a two plus charge and oxygen has a two minus charge it's okay if you write it that way it's just that two to two is the same as one to one so it's the same thing your calcium atom will fill up he'll have eight electrons his charge will be two plus your oxygen will fill up he'll have eight electrons and his charge will be two minus copper one and oxygen copper one is by definition the copper that has one valence electron that's why he's called copper one what you see in the um, the table on the back of your periodic table in that chart next to copper one they're telling you what it looks like as an ion as an ion he gives away that electron so he'll become a copper plus one we'll do that in a minute but first let's draw our oxygen remember oxygen has six so we got one two three well hold on let me clean that up that's a little bit better okay so I'm gonna need two coppers to complete this oxygen right so I need a two so I'm gonna have two copper ions form this is confusing on the periodic table it looks like the undershell for copper has 18 and it does but only eight of those electrons are in the outermost layer of that layer it's a multi-layer layer don't let that throw you it's called the octet rule so even if you seem like you have more than eight when we're drawing bonds you always draw a maximum of eight so the copper ion has eight valence electrons and his charge is one plus because he gave away one electron the oxygen is going to gain two electrons so he's going to have a charge of two negative and a full shell iron two is the iron that has two valence electrons conveniently oxygen needs two so this is just a one-to-one -one. so the iron becomes an ion he gave away his two electrons and remember he's gonna have eight doesn't matter what the periodic table says always eight electrons and the oxygen is gonna fill up and have eight and he's gonna be negative potassium <coughs> excuse me potassium and the nitrate ion potassium is this guy he's got one valence electron Ooh, hard to see hold on that's better and nitrate is actually NO3 now in class I told you guys to write it with the bracket around it but that seems to be confusing people so I'm gonna write the nitrate before it becomes an ion so it doesn't have a charge yet and it doesn't have a bracket yet that's NO3 that's nitrate don't confuse him with nitrite which is NO2 after he bonds he's gonna gain an electron from the potassium and the way I know that is that his charge is minus one on the chart on the back of your periodic table his charge has to be minus one because he gains an electron that's how you get a charge of minus one so potassium is gonna give away his electron and he's gonna fill up with eight electrons and he's gonna have a charge of one plus and then nitrate is going to gain an electron and become one minus notice how I don't write the valence electrons around the nitrate I just leave it the way it is that's because it's much more complicated than I want to get into there um, if you drop if you drop in eight electrons around him it won't bother me but it's just no reason to do it you can just leave it so some people were getting confused they were like wait they wanted to draw what I drew here in the before that was what I told people to do originally but I realize now that 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 seemed to confuse a lot of people who were thinking oh wait if it has it already has a negative charge then what's why are we bonding I get that so maybe it's easier for you to understand this way but this is what NO3 looks like before it bonds and it is a before picture so technically you're right we should do NO3 and then after it bonds is when it picks up that negative charge okay so there are two more down at the bottom that I'll do on the next screen okay so now we're going to work with copper 2 and the sulfate ion so copper 2 is the co version of copper that has two valence electrons and sulfate is a polyatomic ion SO4 on the back that's what he looks like before he gains that charge then 
After bonding, the copper is going to give away those two valence electrons. And remember, no matter what it says in the periodic table, and I know, I know it says 18, but the undershell of copper, we're going to consider it as having eight. It does have 18, but the other 10 electrons are sort of lower down in that shell. And we're going to put a two plus charge. And the sulfate ion, all we're going to do is put him in brackets and put his charge on there, right? His charge is negative two. So we only need one of each of these, right? Because we have two electrons to give away from copper and sulfate must be gaining two. That's why he has a negative two charge. The ammonium ion is actually NH4. That's what he looks like before he bonds. The chlorine atom is just this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So ammonium has a one plus charge after he bonds. That must mean he has one electron to give away. So when he gives away that electron, that's when he'll pick up the positive one charge. And the chlorine will gain that electron and pick up his one minus charge. Don't let it bother you if the polyatomic ions and the transition elements are the, if those are the only two things that are bugging you right now. When you come back from the weekend, we will focus a lot on those and you'll get the hang of them. And they're not hard, it's just, just have to learn the rules. So I'm pretty confident that you guys will be able to do that. So this tutorial is exceptionally long, so I'm just gonna stop right here and I will see you guys in class.